Hi everyone, this is Evgeny and you're watching the second episode in our series about building human in the loop with long graph. And yes, we are using FastAPI as our framework for API server. Okay, just to refresh your memory what we're doing today, this is the example from the previous video and we do have the graph, it's a system graph, we have a number of nodes there and uh, we do have a feedback and we have an interruption and the finalization and then we have the results back. And I was saying last time that this example has a number of drawbacks and one of them was that we are doing the blocking REST API calls and we don't see the result until we get a response back from the server. And just to demonstrate it to you, just to refresh your memory how it looked like previously, uh, I'm going to ask something about like uh, explain what is a human in the loop concept. And I'm pressing enter here and take a look at that. We are blocking way right now, right? We are in a blocking mode. We are waiting to LM. We are waiting for LM to generate the response. And once it's there, we can see it immediately. And what we will be doing today, we will try to grab the data in a streaming mode and streaming talking mode. Let's be explicit. And for demonstrating the difference to you, let's copy paste the same example and go to our updated version of uh, our application. This is a 3.0.0 port and this one was 3.0.1. And look at that, uh, check the difference. And look at that, it's pretty chat GPT behavior, right? Once we have something, we immediately emitted it to the output and showed here. And well, the rest is the same, right? We stopped here, we stopped at the human feedback and we can uh, provide a feedback, for example, uh, make it one sentence short and we can submit it and the same thing happens. We can see immediate results here, right? And uh, when we're happy with everything, uh, well, the sentence is a pretty long one, right? But we don't care much about that. Uh, the whole concept is of our interest and we can improve it. And the same, we can see the output and when it's ready, well, then it's ready. So this is something we are going to work on today. And as previously, let's start from building something to check in our ideas in Python notebook. And for that, I prepared already one. So you go to backhand notebooks and we do have streaming graph here. And basically the graph itself stays the same, right? It's just a different way how would you run it and uh, emit the events immediately. So uh, we do have the same graph, just to refresh maybe your memory. We have a model, we have uh, several nodes, we have a model. Uh, so this is our system draft. Uh, we do have human feedback, which just passes through because uh, we set it here that there is a uh, interruption happens. And we do have this routing mechanism, which decides based on the status is if, it, if, it, if, it, if a feedback cycle should be taken or we can proceed till the end, right? So let me compile a graph and uh, you saw it already, it's pretty simple, straightforward. This is the place where the whole magic happens with feedback. And this time it's different, right? We define a new configuration and here we are not invoking the graph, but we are streaming the graph and uh, we take this three mode as messages. And if you don't know about that, well, check uh, in the course, uh, long graph introduction series, we had a specific lesson we're explaining all this stuff, but for now we're just taking this as a granted, though we, we stream in the graph, we use stream mode to messages, and then we filter out all the messages. Uh, but the ones that come from a system draft or a system finalized, because these are the nodes we are interested in the output result. We are interested to show this result to the user, right? And we're printing every single um, talking from the stream and uh, we're just preventing uh, the uh, new line uh, printing here. So I'm running it and let's take a look. And look at that. We can see the same behavior happens, right? It was streamed. Okay, right? And then we stopped somewhere. And we know that we should have stopped uh, here before the human feedback and we can double check that as well. 
So I'm grabbing the graph state and printing it out. And we do have the state snapshot. And I mentioned that already that uh, we are interested in the state next. And this one shows if we are interrupted or not. And uh, the next is somewhere here. But uh, this one, right? But basically it says that next node should be human feedback. So it's pretty expectable here, right? And now let's provide the feedback and we are doing exactly the same way as we did in the first lesson in the first video with blocking calls we are providing status as a feedback and we put the human comment so make your answer only one sentence short i'm updating the graph that's fine and then we have to resume it and it's the same we are streaming it it's the same filtering out but keeping assistant draft and assistant finalized notes only and the stream mode is still messages so let's do it again and look at that, the same expectation, right? But uh, it's a shorter, it's one line, like kind of one sentence. And uh, if I would check the state, it would be also feedback. But this time, let's just approve it, right? Because we, we, we did the check last time, you know how it works. And let's just approve the graph because we still want to check that assistant finalize is also working fine. So. After improvement, we should go to assistant finalize node and finish on the job. And again, I'm streaming the graph uh, none, which means we are continuing based on the configuration provided and stream mode is messages. So I'm running it again and it was a polishing, kind of uh, making it better maybe, maybe staying the same. It's up to assistant finalize node and uh, here we are with that. We are there, right? And if I check the graph state now and uh, print the next, we can see that, okay, graph was finished. We don't have anything yet. So this is the idea we will try to implement now using a uh, fast API. All right, and basically for streaming, you have several options practically. Uh, the, you can pull periodically your API for the new data and then show it on the front end. Uh, the other way would be to create web sockets and this is the way how you can get updates automatically and at the same time you can send something to the server but in general the implementation is a bit complicated for such a simple example and for now for our application i think we would take the sse protocol which stands for server sends events and this is kind of a light version of web sockets where you can grab events from the server but you have no idea or you have no way how to send something back to the server so it's it's one direct communication from server to client and this is what we need here right because we are not updating on the lifetime our server information, which is interesting to get a stream on lifetime from the server. So SSE is our way to go here. All right, and here we have our API Python. And if you take a look at that, I'm keeping the old stuff still here, right? Uh, this is the post, this is from the previous uh, video. We have uh, blocking calls for post. And for the new stuff, uh, we are providing a different architecture, kind of. So first of all, uh, this is very interesting because uh, if you, mm, let's keep it this way, right? You, you run the execution, the graph, and immediately you want to get back some tokens to show it. But in this case, it's kind of a very strange uh, way to run your graph because uh, what you're doing with um, get in the stream you you run the get there is a certain uh, protocol for that and are uh, you stream back the tokens and it's not clear like why using get you would run a new dialogue right uh, it's it's another way and for that we have this post call here so we have this uh, graph stream create and stream i put just to distinguish from the classical old way but it's not restful api at all just uh, for our current lesson is good enough right and uh, this is the tricky thing because once you run, once you trigger the graph to run, and there could be a delay between the first call when you run the graph and the second call when you get the tokens, and it's not clear your graph in the running state, it's already emitting tokens, and you have to do something with that. It's really tricky. So which way you need probably to have a buffer somewhere to collect all the tokens before the first call for streaming. And then you provide all the collected uh, information from the buffet, uh, buffer to back to the client. But this is a bit overcomplicated, right? And for our example, we make it in a simple way. Uh, what we are doing, we just uh, run, 
uh, so we are using post for kind of setting up the job for run the graph but uh, we really run the graph when uh, we want to stream it so in this case we don't need any buffers and real action happens when you try to stream the graph uh, so what do we have here uh, first of all we need to keep run configuration this time because once you trigger the graph to start and it's not started just uh, configure it to start we need to save this configuration somewhere right we need to save the human request for example and for that we have this run configs and so what's happening uh, when you trigger post call for graph stream create um, well we created a new thread id because it's a new run uh, we create a new run configuration and there we set the top type uh, of the run to start so graph wasn't started yet and we storing human requests from the request so we can reuse it when the graph started and then what we are doing we are returning back um, the current status of this graph so we are providing back the thread id and this is crucial point because using this thread id we can resume the graph we can stream it and do all this stuff and for consistency we also return in run status which is pending which means okay graph is here it's created kind of but it's not run yet it's up to you when you want to run it so this is the create and the second point we have is for uh, resuming the graph after feedback and what we are doing here we have a request uh, resume request and look at that we have approved of feedback and i showed that to you already and if it's a feedback we should define human comment and we need to provide thread id because this is the only way how would you point to a specific graph right so what's happening here uh, we grab in thread id and we fetch the run configuration for this thread id we change the type to resume and uh, we update the action it could be feedback or approved and we put the human comment as well and again we just return back the graph respond and it's still in pending status meaning graph is prepared to be resumed it's not resumed you need to stream it to activate the whole movement right so this is the idea we have two endpoints for creation and for resuming and this is the most crucial point of our today's uh, video how to resume the graph and here you're just following the sse standard and it should be a get thing right uh, we define as a stream just to follow the same principle here it could be whatever you want and we are providing this thread id so what happens here we do have some validation first like if this thread id is not in our run configuration then we are refusing doing anything we just return in the error but uh, well that's kind of validation at least minimum level you should have always and then we get the stored configuration right we are creating our config because we know the thread id and this is the way how we operate with the graph for example when we resume the graph you need to provide this configuration so the graph knows how to continue from the place it was interrupted and we have input start to none so what's happening next uh, based on the type if this is the first time and it's start then uh, we first we emit the event type of start and we are creating the initial uh, state for our graph which contains the human request and otherwise if this is a resuming already uh, then also what's happening we set in the event type to resume and uh, well uh, we are updating fields for status which is uh, approve or feedback and human comment as well right and then we update the status of the graph we saw it already in the python uh, notebook right and practically that's it uh, this preparation work and then we have our event generator function and here we are uh, em emitting events of event type that was defined here and the data and after that we are starting to uh, this block is responsible for uh, providing this graph streaming and uh, we are emitting all the tokens we get from the graph back to the client and this time event is talking and that is uh, data comes from the message itself from the content and then when graph is finished we have two states it's either was interrupted and then we need to emit event that uh, user feedback or if uh, the whole graph was finished then we are emitting status event with the data that uh, the graph was finished and finally uh, when we finish with everything we just uh, remove the configuration because it's, it's, it's obsolete already 
And uh, what we are doing at the moment, uh, finally, we are returning. So this is the key point, right, from this get and this is part of the standard for single uh, server send events. We should return back the event source response and uh, event generator as a function that would be emitting all the events. And uh, this event source response, maybe thumb something I have to mention as well. This comes from uh, SSE Starlet uh, dependence. You have to deploy and install it as well. I guess now we can give it a try and I would propose to use Coral for checking how it works. And here also you can find in the readme I prepared something for you like there's a section where you can also give it a try if you if you do the same on your own machine and uh, it goes through create a new run it streams the results it provides the feedback it streams again the results and approves the answer and does all the stuff so let's do it and I'm using curl for that and uh, well let me put it here And I'm making a post call. I have a human request. I explain what is a human in the loop. And uh, this is my server. And I'm creating a new thing. So the response I have back, look at that. Uh, run status is pending. And uh, we do have this ready, which we need for future calls, right? So now we can start the graph by streaming it. And we need to copy paste the thread ID. And look at that. We can see that events are emitted till the end, right? And the final one is status user feedback. So it's a it's talking, 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 and the last one is status. And status is user feedback, which means we stopped here for user feedback. And now let's provide some feedback, right? And I guess I need to grab somehow the, uh, let's do it this way. I'll copy it in my editor, maybe it's easier. So we are providing feedback. And look at that, we make a post call for a thread ID, uh, action is feedback and user comment, and we are triggering stream resume. And again, we have back the status pending, which means uh, the state was updated, the graph waits to be triggered again, and we do this with streaming. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just updating the stream ID and run it and again the same behavior right we we can see that tokens were emitted uh, we have shorter reply right now and then again back uh, via status user feedback and this time let's just approve it right it was approved, it's still, still uh, in status pending, that's expectable, and then finally we run it again, we stream it. And since it was approved, uh, the expectation is that, uh, well, it will be fully finished. And again, we have the streaming, and look at that, the latest event we got was status, and status was finished. So everything works as, as expected, really. All right, that was it for the whole video. Uh, I showed you the idea how you can stream tokens and still reuse your uh, fast API framework for that. And please remember, we still have some limitations. For example, I mentioned that already in a previous video, we run the graph in embedded mode, and this is not really not production way. Uh, even if you do this in production, it's not production way, really. You have to have your own deployment as a service as a graph, and then you make an API calls from your fast API to graph. But that's another story. Maybe we make another video on that. But that was it. Thanks for watching until the end. I really appreciate it. And it was Evgeny, me. Uh, let's keep in touch, and I will see you later.
Thank you. Take care and bye-bye.